Hello and welcome to the Jersey Shore Musicians Podcast. I'm Matt. That's Jeff. And tonight for episode one, we got our good friend, Jesse Shar. How's it going, guys? Golf club. Golf club. No, thanks for having me. <laughs> ah, what's up, brother? What's up? How are you? Hanging out. It's awesome. It's awesome. Going to teach myself drums. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. No, that's I could never do that. I don't, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I'm not coordinated enough to be a drummer, and I don't want to carry that much shit either. Nah. Fuck that. <laughs> Even though I do help out the drummers, man. They Why? always say, they're like, you're the only <laughs> singer we know that helps us out when, you know. When, oh, I get that shit. all the time, too. And I'm like, I'm a bass player. I'm not a singer. It's never help the drummer. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> That's yeah, coming from a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was a bass player first, so I, I knew Carrie and all that heavy shit sucked. And then I became a singer later on. So then I'm like, yeah, I, oh, I know how much that shit sucks. Especially in Useless, because we yeah. roll so deep. Ian, any, anywhere we play, he's a 6'10 or an 8'10. Does he sit around and wait for you to help him? No, though? but I mean, oh, he, he plays out of a gargantuan cabinet that's probably like 130 pounds. So <laughs> when there's stairs involved, it's definitely a two-person task. It takes a village, man, oh, he went to there. run a band. He went there. No, it's one person, the king only. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. That's that's the goal. Just follow orders from somebody else. Yeah, it never works out though. No, no, you always got the one the one stray. <laughs> yeah, leads leads away from the pack, you know. So what's going on? Not a damn thing, my friend. Check check one two. <laughs> Don't worry, there. Everyone singer. hear me out there? <laughs> Don't worry, singer. We got you. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Why don't you Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into playing music, being in bands? Playing music. Oh man, um, I just grew up around music. My parents played music. They were in like doo wop bands and then top forty cover bands. Uh, that was their job. They played out almost every night. You know, from like AC to the headliner. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, back in the eighties, when it was good, <laughs> when it was cool to it be. It was in a band. like yeah when. I mean, the, the clubs were packed back then, and oh, it yeah. wasn't all about like getting busted, drinking, and driving. They could go out and actually drive and not get busted and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they used to give out like the first 250 people through the door would get a shirt. Oh, it wow. was bananas back then. But oh, they would bring us to gigs or bring us to the studio. And my brother and I would just like hang out and, you know, watch. And we all, we took guitar lessons, bass lessons. And uh, my brother had a drum set, you know. So we just grew up around music and it becomes ingrained in you. Yeah. Going to the flea market, getting vinyl, you know. Oh, nice. Yeah. Patches on our denim jackets. <laughs> <laughs> That's so 80s. <laughs> yeah, but it actually, it's so right now, too. It's coming back. Yeah. Well. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw a bunch of, bunch of bands nowadays are starting with, like, the cut-off jean jackets with the patches all over them. And mm. It's like the That's 80s just all over again. merch to buy. <laughs> there you go. You, yeah. <laughs> That's what you should do. Somebody should make uh, cut-off jean jackets with patches on them. Sell them at their That's shows. It. Sonic Honey. There, there you go. go. Back there patch. Go. <laughs> Back patch. <laughs> Here, put this band, put this band on your on your vest. You've never heard of them, but they're great. <laughs> yeah. So you're recording. You're the singer of Second Skin, and you guys are working on an album. Yeah. Album or an EP? Album. Album. Okay. And uh, let's get a little update. Like, are you guys done completing tracking, or you just yeah. started? Yeah, we tracked everything. Uh, we're in mixing mode, so we're making notes. Um, and that gets hectic when there's a lot of people, five people in a band and everybody's listening for their five parts. Five different personalities. Yeah, and uh, it's it's cool, though. It's great to hear, like, your final, you know, all the work that you put into something. And, you know, this is like the pandemic album, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we've been getting together the entire time, um, just hanging out with each other and writing. And that shit... You know, it's forged over a whole year of, you know, pent up aggression and, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's probably the hardest time, too, is when you're sitting down mixing and you're constantly on top of each other. And there's all the opinions going back and forth. And especially yeah. with all, like, just the tension from the way everything's been the last year. Everybody's been cooped up. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not easy. 
sometimes you want to just um you like i just let the guy mix you know there's a couple guys that have an ear for it. i don't have the ear for music to hear like what's missing or what it needs and stuff I, i'm more or less like let I, it go and let it like well, i got him just catch <laughs> the moment a record of what you did at that time that's why they call it a record right yeah, true. That's a, that's a way to look at that's it. Pretty Go cool. Uh, it, it's just great to hear. Even the stuff that we do and everything, Jeff. Uh, like when I hear it back, I'm always blown away. <laughs> <laughs> Is that us? Does that really sound like us? It's so cool, man. But yeah. uh, so that's cool. So how long did it take you guys to track out the whole sure. complete? Um, I took two days. Okay. For ten songs. Nice. Um, maybe two and a half. Just going back and doing some backups. Um, I actually picked up the screaming a little bit more on this album. It's a little heavier. Nice. Um, so uh, there was like ad libs I had to jump in with. And then what we do is we call them candy parts. The guitars come in like last and do candy parts on top of everything. Oh, and, okay. uh, you know, it's just amazing, man. The guy that we're working with, Mike Orlando from Stomp, Sonic Stomp. Okay. Out of Staten he's a, Island. He's a great engineer, so. Yeah, Adrenaline Mob, and, mm -hmm. like, he's in, like, five bands, dude. That guy yeah, is. Guys, like, they, 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 his life is music. That's all, that's all. All of those guys are, like, multiple bands. They're all over the place. Yeah. They sit in for this guy, write stuff for that guy. Yeah, yeah and they show, like, when they post pictures and they're in front of, like, 10,000 people in uh, Brazil or something, it's, <laughs> you know, it's. It's like, it makes you a little envious. Like, yeah. you know, in Jersey, we don't get crowds like that. We, uh, get, I know. we get the Saint with like 25 no, people. Yeah. It's like I got, the other day I was seeing like all the, the big festivals out in like the Midwest and stuff. They're starting to promote that they're trying to do them again in like September, October-ish. And it's like, why can't they ever have anything like that around here? Well, they did the here, see, now. Yeah, they usually do that once a year. I don't think they did it last year. No. Cause I don't the think they're going to do it like, this year either. <laughs> well, we're talking about like, big metal fest. There's like the, you know, the Rock on the Range. I know, and all and those. they never come around here. But it just, that would be awesome. You'd kill it in this area. You, I think Ohio is the closest one. Yeah, that's Rock on the Range, I believe. Yeah, that, and yeah. that's like a six-hour drive. That ain't bad, man. Yeah. But still, I was just like, I see that they're starting to pop up again, and I'm like, man, I wish they were around here. Mm. I remember playing Cleveland, man, on tour, and it was it's fucking cold, dude. Oh, yeah. Like 20 below. And there's kids lined up down the street with like no shirts on, drinking. Like, wow. I don't know what. I went to Cleveland once. We went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We passed it. We were going to go in. <laughs> I was so let down. We, we, so we drove all the way out there. I get to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And you know what the main exhibit is that month? Fucking Bruce Springsteen. No, oh, oh, no. And the, like the biggest piece they had was like this sign from the Stone Pony. And I'm looking at the guy that works there. He's like, what? I'm like, I could have drove a half hour from my house and seen that. <laughs> That's great. <sighs> and if you bring your album, you get him free. Oh, yeah? I don't know if it's still like that. But I don't know. We, were, we were ready to go. We were like, oh, we got an album. We can go in. But we were just like, dude, it's so cold. And these beers are going down so nice and, yeah. on the bus, you know. I've heard mixed stories about the Hall of Fame. It's sometimes it's good and sometimes it's just garbage. Really, like not worth going. You know, like really, sometimes really. there's nothing there. I don't know. I mean, we got the Hard Rock now. We can just go there and see some cool <laughs> shit. I was gonna say when I went there, it was like I was looking around. The only they have one poster, and that was the only thing they had up for Chuck Berry when I was there. Oh wow! I was like, how is that the only freaking thing you have in here for the guy that? Almost, he's like yeah. the father of rock and roll. Yeah, wow. And it's just this one little poster on the wall, but they got a whole room for Kurt Cobain. I'm like, you sons of bitches. Yeah, well, he was a big influence too. How about Elvis? Elvis has his own room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I he's saw Elvis's king. car in uh, somewhere in Hollywood, man. That was one of his cars was just fucking sick, dude. Oh, wow. It was like a drop top Eldorado oh, with the yeah. phone, and this was like the '60s, dude. That's awesome. How the fuck did they have phones and cars back then? So you played in Cleveland. Uh, what you know? What are some good tour experiences? Maybe what was the worst tour experience? The worst. Yeah, what's the worst? Let's start that. It's always good to go with the bad first. Um, it's always bad when like the headliner don't show up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, the worst is when probably we were supposed to play with Saliva somewhere in Texas. 
and they pulled up and we were all like stoked we we're like cool they showed up you know because they were there it was already late and uh then they just pulled away and we were like all right maybe they're like going to get beers or something you know That's what i awesome. mean and uh it turned out that they said the stage was too small or too big for them one of the i would think too small no, but they, this was like a huge stage this was fucking it was awesome dude. wow and uh yeah that sucked man because <laughs> they had to announce that they weren't showing up so the crowd like pretty much leaves yeah. you know uh, half of the crowd left and uh you're stuck playing anyway <laughs> that's crazy so it's like playing here you play to like 20 people and you go by your best yeah and the cool thing was it was a really nice stage though it was like you know i think indian hooked us up on it and uh you know, you we were like ten feet off the ground. You know, nothing like Jersey. Yeah. Once mm. in a blue. That's because anywhere outside of this, you know, like the tri-state area, they make they make us. It's a big thing when you go to see a band and stuff. So like, the, there's more dedicated to the actual like stage and setup and. Yeah. Yeah. You know, around here you get a lot of places where they, you know, build like a three-inch riser with some plywood, and there's your stage. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Let me roll the what's rug wrong? on the dirt. There you go. It's Jersey, like ten what's foot wrong by twelve foot. All six of you get up there. <laughs> that's like when you play South by, because every Tom, Dick, and Harry's renting out like a five by five space in their restaurant uh, for you to play. Because, dude, it's just there's so many venues. I mean, there's pizza places and restaurants everywhere, coffee shops. You could play anywhere during that, that whole week or what, maybe it's two weeks. Oh, but, cool. dude, sometimes I'll be on the floor with the crowd, you know. We even have set the drummer up in the crowd. Oh, that's cool. And that's really cool, man. Yeah. Because people just get fucking stoked over that shit. Yeah. It's different. Yeah, it's, it's nice. And it almost makes the music sound like it's faster because the drums are first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I've known a few bands where they, they put the drums front and center on the stage and then everybody else goes around them to That's the back. Cool, and they, they're like, I was like, why'd you do that? And he goes, because people remember it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that band, that remember the drummer was right up front and then right back to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a That's good cool. idea because that cool. gig we played yeah. with the drummer in the front like people still talk about it and they'll always talk about That's how crazy. the drum boat's in the front it's the first yeah. thing they go to yeah this huh. is this is not to uh encourage you drummers to be the singers front guys yeah they get want your to ass be. in the back bro they you want to be anyway the you know that hold down the ground dude well you're basically at the mercy of your drummer no matter what oh yeah you totally. know what oh I we mean. know That's Another bad thing about when you're touring is you're always going to break down. Like, you're always going to get a flat. Yep. You know, it's just depending upon, like, when. Yeah, when and where. Where and, uh, you know, and then who's got the money to cover that $700 tire, man. Nobody. Those, <laughs> those, those shops will kill you. No, you got a credit card. We'll take credit card. Don't and worry. And usually... You know, I think it's Smitty who comes up with the plan, like somebody's got to give up a card or he'll call somebody or, you know, the guy comes up with these crazy ideas. And, uh, you know, he's a cool guy, Smitty. I don't know if you guys I know. know. Yeah, I, I love know. Smitty. He's I know. a great, he's dude. great. So great dude. we would be like on our way to wherever, Nashville. So he would line up gigs as we're driving you know for off days and we'd end up at like west virginia fucking or somewhere near georgia borderline somewhere it's just awesome man it's just a fucking adventure man but it's that awesome. boy he could take up a, a lot of space on the fucking tour bus in the bed he's a, he's a big boy <laughs> like we were all just cuddled up in the bed <laughs> and shit. Oh, man. <laughs> <sighs> boy. that's the best you just like being the little spoon it's okay <laughs> That's a little spoon. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are in the mix down for the the new record. So yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Um, we covered uh, we covered Chicago twenty five or six two four. Okay, and, wow, that's uh, different for it's a rockin' version, man. It's fucking sick. Oh, that's kind of cool. Switch. I can't wait to hear that now. Yeah, that's it's, pretty cool. It's a fun time playing that song because you know everybody they've been telling us for 
the past year when we before the pandemic that we had to record it you know everyone's like dude you gotta record that and then we've had they have got approached by other singers even and they were like yo you want to do that song for me and fucking my band's like no wow. <laughs> but like famous people wanted to do it and uh i was getting to the point where i was getting worried i was like dude we got to put this fucking song out before somebody else does you know yeah true tries to bite the style a little bit but mm-hmm. for some reason it just clicks you know getting away from that you know we did land down under oh that's cool um and that's a pretty popular song they did it with the previous singer and it was on regular rotation on the rat for a little while okay but it's like since it was another singer, you know, we're not really comfortable doing that song mm-hmm. in concert, so we needed to come up with a cool cover. So, uh, let's talk about your lyric process for the new album. Did you okay. sit in a corner and write all day and night and cry over candles, or was the, it this uh, a big group thing that you kind of like? All right, we're gonna. What's the feel of this song? Do we want to be? kick your face in or are we trying to get you to bed something like that mm, no um basically our band we just do we do our job um so they let me do whatever i want with the with the lyrics and the vocal melody so they'll play a riff so, you know sometimes it just happens auto- automatically that mm-hmm. i'll get a vocal melody but uh, a lot of times it'll just be like riffing you know, like okay. scat almost, like just <clears throat> gibberish over uh, lyri- uh, over right music. After that. And then uh, over the course of like a month, it'll come out, you know, somewhere that I'll go into a direction. But okay. it's usually about like past relationships or stuff that happened, you know. Yeah. Uh, so you, you go on the approach of um, real events. Yeah. You know, you're not um, making the story up and, you know, yeah, some people no. do that and sometimes that works out or you never know. For but. me, I think that real, if it's real, it's so much more authentic. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. Says when it's real, you have a more of a connection to it. A connection so to, yeah. You're, the, the, the passion for it comes through and conveys a little easier. Even when somebody writes like... Uh, one of the tunes the drummer Tommy wrote uh, the chorus so that was hard for me to connect to because it's not your work it yeah. wasn't yeah. mine and I was like man I had to really like you had to find your feel it. for it yeah, yeah. and it, it turned out so good the, the guy writes really cool fucking lyrics that are like more thought out mine are just my fucking crazy head like, <laughs> What comes out, comes out, you know. I wish I could be the kind of guy to write a song about something like, you know, a story guy. I'm not like that Mike Ness story guy, you gotcha. know. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, it's been a tough, it's been a, it's been a tough year, man. Oh, Holy shit. Yeah. To say the least. To say yeah, the least. And now, <laughs> yeah, DJ's ruined the Jersey Shore scene for a while. Uh, you know you what? Know. The Jersey Shore ruined the Jersey Shore scene. Let's be honest, because yeah, now the DJs been... aren't even getting jobs. They're yeah. SOL just as much as bands. Yeah, the pandemic really fucked everything I even up. think before the, like... Yeah, it, I was, mean, it was definitely tapering off before that. Yeah, like, you can COVID just kind of sped things up a little bit. Yeah. Pand- I've, I've known bars to just put on Pandora. Pay what was it? That's was true, it like man. Ten dollars a month. That's yeah, way yeah. you could do like that six years before you pay one band. That's awesome. You know, so it's like no, it's and, not and awesome. <laughs> the best is those internet fucking jukeboxes. Yes, where you that's can another play, one. Like Slayer and shit. Yep. And suicidal. People and... Uh, they eat that shit up. <laughs> but that's I'm r- bad. I like dive bars. I love dive bars. Yeah, man. Who doesn't the like a good dive bar? Fucking Tom's Tavern in Farmingdale or like I've never been there. Oh my god, dude. It's great. They have they do have music though. Oh, you know, okay. But they do the trio or the or the duo thing, yep. and uh, you know, and that's what everybody's doing now. Oh, oh yeah, they're saving everybody. saving some bread they're easily. Fucking, get a yeah. little bit of more, more money to go around between the people in the band because you're not getting as much. Yeah, I mean, the the one less cut is it helps. Yeah, one less. It's a little more than that. So. Jesse, talk about, because you do some solo stuff. You're actually a little bit of a gun for hire. Yeah. 
you know yeah Let's i am um, that try to make money doing you know music however i can uh with my voice if i see somebody needs vocals on a country tune or like a rock tune i'll i'll respond and see if they want to uh you know if they want to hire me huh. and um and work with them usually you meet you meet the people and if you you build a repertoire if you if if you click right away and i can show them what i do i've had like a few people just wanting me to sing on the spot you know and that's always tough man yeah. oh yeah it's like a fucking it's like if you're a com if you're a comedian someone says like say something funny you know yeah tell me a joke yeah come on sing sing something fuck you you know it, it's yeah it's it gets annoying but if they want to pay you know some money you try to work with people you know if you're doing what you like to do man it's always great you get to work with so many cool engineers and you know it's yeah meet, just, meet a ton of different people from you know avenues that you normally wouldn't cross right you know before i would say before the pandemic and probably five years ago previous i used to go on craigslist and it was pretty decent to find musicians, but I, that's how you found us. I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bob, right. But yeah, solo stuff. Um, I just always write shit, man. I always have a notebook, or like now I got the iPhone, so it's like yeah. you just constantly make voice memos. I probably have a thousand voice memos in my phone of of material, you know, the waiting to get you know. Oh, you see, I practice this. I'm always recording stuff. Yeah, always. Just so you can listen back, you might be like, "Oh, I forgot I even played that." You it's know? like, what did we do before phones, man? I don't know. Cassette tapes, saying, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the guy that does that recording thing. Like, I don't. It's crazy. You know, I don't sit there and go, "I'm going to write this riff and I'm going to put it on my phone or whatever." If it's good enough, I'll remember it. You know, I've done that a couple you're, times. You're like, like you're old school. Now, I am. I know nobody like can remember shit anymore. Oh, uh, it's crazy, and uh, I play in the a lot of things yeah. and I don't use cheat sheets <laughs> after the very beginning. Jesse, hey, man, Jeff. No, 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 no. Because we all know in my red solo cup, it's either water or whiskey and you can't tell there's nothing left. And I'm all out of water. No, there's <laughs> no more water. What do you got over there in your little, uh, what is oh, that, a man. Yeti? Yeah, you trendy you know with a Yeti over this? there. I got this for Christmas from my girl because... She likes picking out fruity colors for me. Oh, that's cool. But uh, I actually have like dessert kind of coffee going on. I usually drink coffee black, but uh, okay. I had a I had a big dinner and I was like, you know what? I want to put French vanilla in here. So uh, I don't know if you're into the creamers, but yeah. French vanilla. I creamer. like my coffee to taste like coffee. Yeah, I got <laughs> this thing is sweet. It's, it's like ice cream, man. No, it's awesome. all good. I, I I know a bunch of my buddies drink all that crazy shit, and I'm just like, nah, I like the coffee. Just a pinch of sugar, a little bit of half and half. I don't do any good. anything usually, just black. Okay. Like, like Henry Rollins, man. Uh, you ever see go. him live? No. He no. had a thermos with steaming coffee through his whole fucking sh set, man. Hmm. And just That's awesome. Not one of the best things I ever saw, I saw a typo at the Stone Pony, and I wanted Peter Steele literally drank four bottles of wine wow. in one set. Just oh, from, picked up the bottle, which was just like, blah, 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 blah. let's <laughs> talk about um, where people can find you, your email, YouTube. Okay, all that yeah, stuff. Um, action. We're on uh, <laughs> we're on Facebook. It's Second Skin. It's S E K O N D S K Y N uh, dot com. People could reach out whenever they want. I mean, right now, it's not really that active. People aren't really concerned with bands right now, but no. we have material coming out, you know, and that's another thing. I don't, we don't know how to release it right now. No, it's, there's no way to, there's it's, no good there's way no to way. go about it. Yeah. We're thinking of maybe keeping all the material, releasing like a double single like release it a single at a time or trying maybe... to generate interest so that by the time it's ready to play or you're ready to play out yeah you can sell the cd i mean yeah there's there's a couple different ways to go about yeah. that you know, it's hard CD. what decade are you in well you gotta try i mean i sell, sell out i'd sell out all the cds we had 
just walk around the crowd after a show, yeah. man. And a CD, I'm saying, dude, right now, CDs are a thing of the past, man. Absolutely. But I just, you know, tell you tell people that you need gas money for the next show or whatever, yeah. and they usually <laughs> buy one. It's like, crazy. oh, this is a cool little coaster. I'll take this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And usually they throw them right out the you would hope they download the it home. first at least i would download it into my computer and then throw it the fuck out but like cars don't even come with cd players anymore why well, i bought my truck i'm like where's the cd player he's like it, it doesn't have one i'm like what oh shit yeah. Yeah. and that's a that's an expensive truck yeah wow. it's, it's not standard anymore everything's mp3 or you know hook up to your Bluetooth. phone yeah. i love that shit though man just play it on your phone oh, yeah. all the all my ideas all the shit i do at home i could play right through my phone to my car man you know my my phone hooks right up to my truck these days at with home recordings it's great it is but it's also not like you know i mean a lot of guys that have studios are probably hurting but um uh, you know i hear things that were recorded on a laptop and you can kind of tell Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like you, you still need that precision. You still need that the way to grab the microphone grabs the signal. And that's something you don't just get. You you taught. Like there's a yeah. science behind yeah. it, you know. And I know it's like I know because uh, just from doing it myself, like sometimes I strike gold, man, and then other times I'm completely off. I don't know yeah. what I do. I think the best way to capture a voice is just in a nice big room with no mic. So your microphone, you you want it to sound like a natural voice. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I kind of always picture it in my mind. But... I don't know how to engineer it. It's so much easier when someone's pushing the buttons for you. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll just walk up and make the noises. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. What are you, the macho man now? No, oh, boy. Now, do you guys have like a YouTube channel or like is there um, any videos that you guys have sure. up that are? Yeah. If you Google Second Skin, S-E-K-O-N-D-S-K-Y-N, it's just weird spelling, but we got an illegal, uh, what's that called? When somebody makes you like. Trademark? Release the, using the, it, the, the, if you spelled it the normal way. Oh, it would be a cease and like, desist. Cease and desist, yeah. yeah. There's another band in That's London. awesome. They're like so goth, dude. They're like the cure on fucking acid, bro. <laughs> and they sued us for the name, so. Wow. Yeah. Man, I it didn't sucks. know you could do that. Cause yeah, because like a- I thought it was state by state. You know, I guess not. Trademark is yeah, you know, all around. Huh? It, oh, wow, that's wow, weird. Like weird. I, at one point, I mean, don't quote me on this shit. <laughs> um, but uh, totally talking out my ass. But if you could, <laughs> if you go online, we have tons of shit. And then we do like, we got together with a bunch of guys and did uh, acoustic songs okay. as El Capo. <laughs> and oh, that okay. was that was so fucking cool, man. What kind of songs did you guys do? We did like. 90s covers okay and some zeppelin and some uh nice. some skinner and neil young and stuff and uh that was so cool just to like strip down the music to okay. play at a lower level oh it's volume wise yeah. it is a little more intimate yeah yeah i could see that oh that's super cool though we'll have to have you guys come down do some uh songs for us talk about it yeah that would be great <laughs> yeah man. i love doing that shit even low volume practices are something that people like neglect, you know? Oh, yeah, you get a drummer who will set up like a pad set or something and just is willing to jam out and, and go through the set at a low volume, man. You see what you could really, you could really learn a lot from that kind of a you practice. You should come to a useless practice. I have my PA to the point where it's about to blow a fuck up. Yeah. And I can't even hear myself over everybody else. <laughs> That's how I am at Second Skin. It's bad. That's why when we finished the album, those guys were like, whoa, this is fucking awesome. You know, we we never hear what you sing. <laughs> you know, we're like, they got fucking Marshall Stacks and oh Ampeg Stacks and wow. full, you know, 
People still do that. They yeah. use still they still use like four twelve half stacks. Yeah. I mean I could see that for a gig. So our practice room is maybe the size of this room we're in right now. And each guitar player plays a four twelve and a one fifteen. Ian plays an eight ten along with a full drum set mm-hmm. in a room this small. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. It's crazy, dude. Like my and ears it's loud. hurt. That's I, loud. I'd start wearing man. earplugs because I just it, my ears would hurt by the end of practice. Yeah, and it's not good. Oh no. <laughs> You're like, no. It's, it's not good for your ears. They I, we played a gig at the Saint and they had a new guy on monitors. He, he, this, he killed my right ear, I think, that night. It was like, it has never been the same. <laughs> so, thanks to Saint. Yeah, way to go, guys. But I love that place. Those guys are cool. We're thinking about playing a gig there. Um, well, they're, they're doing, doing like a live like stream or something. Live right? stream. They got a guy that streams you. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess there's two cameras. Okay. And then there's the sound dude who's always been there. Maybe it's Brett Smith. I don't know. No, I don't uh, know where Brett is. Brett. Tom, Tom, the red-haired dude, he's always there. Yeah, I think Hinge. Hinge. Oh, I think the... Hinge is gone. I thought really? I thought I saw something online. We'll have to reach out to him, find out. Because I'd love to talk. They to him wanted too. like, I think they wanted like three hundred bucks. Oh, that's not for bad. An hour. I was curious on how much. It's not they bad wanted. for having the, the computer guy there, sound guy, yeah. and then the bartender takes care of you. You know. Yeah, that's uh, cool. What's her face? Meg. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I was Jesus. curious about that. I wonder what they were doing or how they were doing it, but Meg's cool people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Meg's awesome. I she's like her. always reaching out. Hey, how you doing? How's she's your wife? Cool. She's, she's awesome. How's awesome it, person. Everybody, you know, every time I, every, dude, I don't know how she remembers all the people. Oh, neither do I. I give her credit all the time. I'm like <laughs> So Jesse, why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold of you? Okay, they can email Second Skin at s e k o n d s k y n n j dot com. That's Second Skin New Jersey at gmail dot com. And as usual, you can get a hold of us at j s m p info at gmail dot com. That's j s m p info at gmail dot com. And Jeff will get right back to you. I'll try. I never do. It's always going to be Matt. Yeah, it's it's always me. Yeah, it's always me. It's a team thing, so this is his part. So sorry. Yeah, what a team, huh? I still love you, though. And now, a word from our sponsors. The power of Sticker Jesus compels you. Full-color, waterproof, and UV-resistant decals printed for your art, your business, your club, or anything you want to promote. DM his assholiness here or email me to start your order. Remember, Stuck Up is your source for signs, stickers, banners, and way more. And if you mention the Jersey Shore Musicians podcast, you will get... 10% 10% off your first order. How about that? Wow, that's man. really nice of them to do that. See that? Wow. You guy should go get some stickers, guy. man. Guy. Yeah. Good All right, well, uh, for Jesse, thanks for coming in, bud. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, it's been a blast. I hope you had a good so time. So much fun. Always. And uh, Rock and roll. That's it for us, huh? Yeah, we're done, dude. This guy's had too much whiskey already. Uh, no, not enough Th- yet. Time to call it a night. Nah. All right, we'll see you guys next Monday.